When you want to put a new product or service onto the market, you're very often reliant on other stakeholders. Very few companies can do everything by themselves. Even if you have most of the skills and competencies within your organization, it still makes sense to join forces with other organizations. This doesn't just happen for startups, but it's equally important for bigger organizations. Whether you're in need of market knowledge or certain funding opportunities, or maybe it's a distribution network. Now, from a startup perspective, it makes sense to partner with a big organization. They can maybe give you faster market penetration through their established sales and distribution networks, or maybe it is because they can use their established brand and reputation, or maybe it is because they can deploy certain resources such as funding or human resources or even funding opportunities. And that's because if you're a startup, you're very often low on funds, you have higher risk, and you don't have that brand or reputation just yet. Now, do be aware that as a startup, you're also a lot more informal and dynamic compared to a bigger organization. And you can iterate on new information quite quickly because of a lean execution mindset. Big organizations tend to have a high hierarchy and because of lots of meetings, lots of procedures, things tend to slow down a lot in bigger organizations. So be aware that very often an unbalanced set of expectations exists between a startup and a bigger organization where you as the startup want to go hard and fast and from the corporate side, lots of formalities need to be put in place first. Now, as I've said before, from a startup perspective, it makes sense to partner with a big organization, but big organizations can benefit from startups too. And that's because very often they want to keep their finger at the pulse of everything that's going on in their industry. Maybe they're scouting new interesting developments or opportunities, or maybe they even want your solution integrated into their own portfolio because of their long-term strategy and the alignment with their vision. Now, there are essentially three types of partnerships, a joint venture, an equity partnership, and a non-equity partnership. A joint venture is a strategic alliance between two or more companies that form a new independent legal entity that is then owned by the companies who form it. This could be a 50-50 joint venture where both companies own half of the newly formed company, or this could be what's called a majority joint venture where one of the companies owns more than half of it and thus has more stake in it. A second type of partnership is an equity partnership. And that happens when company A buys into company B. Company A then has a certain equity percentage of company B. And thirdly, we have a non-equity partnership that happens when two or more companies work together and sign an agreement that they can use each other's resources to achieve a certain well-desired outcome. Now, essentially, whatever type of partnership exists, it comes down to the same thing. Working together in a structured way to achieve a certain mutually beneficial outcome. Now, different types of partnerships come with different types of responsibility and engagement. A joint venture is very often used to mitigate risk, whereas an equity partnership or a non-equity partnership usually exists to maximize returns for all stakeholders involved. So wrapping it all together, when you want to form a partnership, don't jump in too quickly, but consider all the options and then make an informed decision.